Welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. I'm Derek. And I'm Jared from the Questionable Garage, formerly known as Wrench Every Day. We're here in the middle of nowhere, Georgia, to try to get this 1972 Ford Econovan running once again. Yes, there's actually a van back there, but first, we've got to cut this thing out. Oh yeah, I told you it was gonna be fun. <laughs> Sweet. Oh no. Why did we pick the most thorny area? Okay, so here's the deal. Jared found the 72 Ford. Actually, it's a super van, which is the super. longer wheelbase, right? Longer wheelbase. They there had some fun options. You had the super van to make it longer and then window to make it less creepy in the neighborhood. <laughs> well, so, yeah, that's the so glass it's, option. It's, it's really a fully nice. optioned van. So this has been sitting for 32 years, potentially yeah. 33. Potentially 33. The tag is 1990. So if it broke down at the beginning of 89, it's been 33 years. Otherwise, 32. So a little while. And the story goes, and I'm probably going to tell it wrong and Jared yeah. can fix it for me. But basically the guy had a business, used this van a lot. Cost of downtime and everything else. He had some issues with it. He can't quite remember what it was. Potentially clutch, maybe a water pump. Who knows? It was cheaper, easier, faster to get a different van and just park this thing up. Is that pretty close? Yeah, that's pretty much it, where it just couldn't get it into the workshop quick enough and he had a job to go to in the morning, so he bought another van, which might be that one broken down there. Potentially. That's that is... the problem. He couldn't remember which one broke for what reason, so. <laughs> we got bias supplies and a key, and I think that's all we need. But first, we got, as you can see, we got to make some room in here cut this thing out so we can actually see what we're working with and get some room. That almost got my eye. I need Sorry to work about out. that. There we go. And then we'll walk around this thing and see what kind of flavor van we really got. So this is pretty wild. We got it cleared out and you can almost imagine pulling this van in 30 some years ago because all of this would have been gone. It wouldn't have been here yet, yeah. right? So that's all the fresh saplings. So. Would have been these trees. And cause a lot of people say, well, how come they parked it in the trees? Right. You don't quite park it in the trees at the time. Right. And it's actually in a lot better shape than we thought once we got everything out of here. Uh, you can see here, it's 90 on the plate and Jared was explaining this is a local dealership isn't it yeah they're in Cornelia Georgia is 15 maybe 20 minutes from here and we are in White County Georgia so the van has just lived here its whole life which is kind of cool it, it really is actually that's pretty neat gas cap still on it that's good look at these tires that's kind of what sold me it's these old bias supplies it's got I don't know the year Fellers, but it's like eight early 80s ish hubcaps and wheels maybe on it there's a different setup there you could tell a guy was maybe preparing for winter or something with these on there i don't know what the deal was well that's the old trick when you've got a two-wheel drive van and you got to do four-wheel drive stuff with it especially if you got a lot of weight you put the mud terrain in the back to kind of chew up and then you got your steer tires up front for steering comfort yeah oh, there you go <laughs> This is kind of cool. You can see the bare metal from the trees and the vines kind of rubbing on it. And there's a, I don't know if you, I don't know if we call it a scar or what, but this is that vine that was growing up through the door handle and everything there. Yeah, I love that it went under the door handle. Yeah. But I mean, as far as rust goes, that's probably the worst, ain't it? There's that, a little bit in the hood and well, this is just speed holes up here. This is for drifting, and that's drag racing over here. Auxiliary cooling? Yes, the A of the C's. But I was surprised to see 
and I think it was in luck to this tire being down. It doesn't have the wind. The way well, you can see the water was just running down this panel here. But this rain gutter or channel is not rotted out. I can't believe it, but I got to because I'm looking right at it. I don't think there's any dents in it or nothing. Pretty hard to say. Got some really cool patina on the, you could tell it was a working van, right? Look at the bumper. Everything was just scraping, rubbing off of this. You got the super vans right there. It's got all the tail lights in it. I mean, it wasn't like it was wrecked and parked. There was clearly something mechanical wrong with it, which is going to be our job to figure out what exactly that was. Really cool mirrors. Is this like a wind deflector? Is that? For... I saw that and was trying to figure it out. I don't know if it's just enough to keep it from messing up the aim of your window or your mirror <laughs> or what, but it's cool looking. Might have been like a 80s mile per gallon gimmick or something. <laughs> Who knows? Increase 0.2 miles a gallon. Yeah. The glass is phenomenal. Other than, I think there was a crack. Oh, right here. Right in the captain's side viewage. And that's also where the gasket might go, unfortunately. But other oh, than that. That gasket's mint. Yeah. It's not shrunk in 17 different places. No. A little silicon, that'd be fine. So I think where we're going to start is we don't have a trunk, but we do have like 17 feet of van cargo. Let's just open the back, take a peek, probably ignore all of that and then get up into the captain's seat here and see what's going on. All right, that's, that's a good sign when it just... Well, the first time, there you go. Whoa! Oh. You see all the, oh yeah, that's humid. That's... I don't know if that's wood and cardboard or... I don't, I don't know. But I saw some light bulbs, it might be worth it. How do you recycle those today? Oh, wow. It's like a bird bath full of urinal cakes. It's not good. It's it's getting oh. That's a sound. <sighs> well, help me understand what there's thirty-eight thousand dollars in fluorescent lights in here. I wonder, that we're probably new. Look at the box. I wonder if he was on his way to install some lights and it broke down and he just forgot about the lights there. Jared, I've, listen, I've seen some things, but this is, this is, they're I don't. Like four footers too. I mean, that, they're ready to work. And he was confused. Clearly it's like plumbing supplies, but I paint, but I could put your lights in. Or if you need the cabinets, I'm the guy. I do know he has a well and a water company, plumbing company and an electrical company. So I'm, it just makes sense, obviously. Wow. There's a lot of room in here for activities though. It's the oh, super. It's got like a jump seat. That's sweet. Like yeah. a, like it folds or something yeah. maybe? Let's try the side door, see if we get that open. What is that? Value, is that value hardware maybe? Something like that? Since 1930. Value, value. Value, value, value. Since. Hmm. Does it even have door handles? From Seals these? are fine. Oh, up the... <laughs> that... That is cool. Do you want to talk oh. about some more money? What are we... A pair of well pumps. Oh, okay. Oh, look at the hardware box. Ooh, a padlock. All right. Ooh, it's a combo one. Do you know the combo? I don't. The handle's busted off. That's probably why you parked it. <laughs> handle's gone. We got headlights. Some spiky looking vegetation. Five different headlights. 68,000 feet of like receipt rolls, some fake fingernail box things, a porcelain insulator to a power line. I mean, this guy, I think we're best friends, actually. This is pretty good. Plus there's like, there's like $600 in plywood in here. Especially then, in today's economy. Yes. Let's pull some of this out and then we can clamor around up there maybe. Do you think that's a factory drain or a environmental drain? 
Uh, I think that was just an ankle vent, actually. Ooh. Is this the part of the handle that's missing? Not wheel stud. Oh, wheel stud, yeah. Actually, we need that. That's a front pocket find. We're going to try to transfer some of the goods from that van into this van. That's a slider. So Jared's going to come in and delicately remove some of the foliage with whatever metal whirly disc thing that is. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> Dayton, and we got v 8 back here, and an intake, and some RG59 coax cable, Chevrolet valve cover, there's some good stuff in here, yeah, oh yeah, look at that same tumble seat, <laughs> look at this, this sack of quickcrete is now officially not so quick, just that's a block of concrete, currently. <laughs> they didn't really upgrade anything through the years. I think we can take that seat and bolt it into ours, practically. We probably could, actually. <laughs> and here's the floor we need, probably. All right. We got a tire. So, we're gonna take that stuff, allegedly, and move it into here. Ready, go. That's a skill saw. Empty? Empty. Oh no. <laughs> Was a skill saw. We've seen two rats run out of here now. A very, very thick rat. I don't know that I've seen one that big in a while. <laughs> the great news is he ran into the dash. So that's perfect. There's nothing important up here. No. We're Have you noticed the window crank up front yet? No. Oh, you're gonna like the passenger side. Okay. <laughs> Worth the trip, right there. That's a good old one, too. Well, we got enough out of here. Look at the old Coke bottle. Wow. We got enough out of here now. This guy did everything. To climb in the front, maybe even get the doghouse off, see what kind of flavor engine we got going on. I'm also curious about that. That looks like it's in Neutralis. And if that's the case, it might have been pushed or towed into here if it's not in park. Write that down, fellers and fillets. Bosco's hunting them. Rats. Smell them? Look at this heater control. It's just on or off. You don't get any middle. Oh yeah, he's on and on. Good old pup. Got some hardware up here. Is that an AM radio? AM only. No such accoutrements there. Nothing there. This seat's pretty neat though. I think it folds down and flips all the way up into here. Oh, you want to open that and see what's in there? Some things are best left to the imagination. <laughs> I imagine some pop, popcorn Sutton's moonshine. Hmm. But we're just gonna. Sure. We'll just leave the cap on for now. All right, let's see if we can get that door open. Climb in over there. I do see the key. And see what we got going on. Did you find him yet? Huh? Hand planer. And thanks to Ford, they explained how a jack stand works. Huh. That's neat. So I'm going to try to get the captain's side door open here. Normally, guy gets into the hood, but... There's really not much of a hood. There's more of a doghouse. Well, that opened. That's the easiest open a door I got. Sandcastle bucket. E brakes on. I gotta check this right away. Oh, she's she's kind of not doing much. 
It's making noise. It's doing something. I have a hunch it was rolled into here. Feels like there's a clutch pedal. Well, that's better than nothing. Yeah. You got ignition sticks? What if it just fired up? Right. <laughs> Can't even read the mileage. All right. Should we just whip this off and see what we got going on? Yeah. I mean, we almost don't. I'm getting all kinds of spider webs. We almost don't have to. I, I noticed there, there is a little bit of rust here. Oh, yeah. That's for on the fly adjustment. I bet that's great for the carbon monoxides. It, right about where you would have an exhaust leak, too. So. Oh, that's great. All right. Clampage off. Do you think any of these clamps matter anymore? I think they're just too rotten to even. Yeah. I don't think they do anything. <laughs> oh, there's there's more nature. Oh wow. Maybe I need to come back one door. I see more leaves than engine, which is starting to be a concern. There is someone who's taken one of these off a lot and they're just swearing at you right now. Yeah. I think there's an anglage involved. Is it hooked? I think we're hooked. It feels like it's on a bungee cord. Oh, there we go. Just, oh, okay. All right. I don't know how many miles this thing's had, but this has been sat on more than a truck stop toilet seat. I ain't kidding you. She's going to be high miles. Let me just slide in here. Okay. Six in a row, stubbed my toe. Almost like we didn't even pull the dog house off. It's all here, I think. The fuel pump doesn't even have a hose clamp later on it. <laughs> is that required? Oh, man. So this is uh, going to be a 200-something, or hopefully the 300, but we'll figure out here in a minute. <laughs> it goes from the ground to the engine. Wild. Yeah, there's not much floor in here. Right there. It seems solid under you, right? How does that feel? No, oh, it's great over here. I mean, what? I wonder why here. Uh, couldn't tell you. I'm not even going to hit this brake pedal because you know what happens. But what about this one? Oh, that's stuck. Radiators in here. Hey. Okay. Ventilator. I get. I get a little here. You got a little over there now when you touch it. There yeah. you go. Oh, it is cable operated. I thought it was all levers. This is one very large fire hazard. It is. Duralast. One. The guy put one new lightning hose. Forget the rest. This is. <laughs> he is definitely a minimalist. You got one new lightning hose. No clamps on the new fuel line. Which who knows where that goes. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Is this the most nature that you've ever started with? Oh, uh, it's up there. It's I mean, you started there. with chainsaws. Yes, this is true. I like the alignment and the steering. That's tight. Yeah, I mean, she's, it's a handler. We got a one barra. Heater hoses are eaten off. No surprise there. I've been brushing a while. It just doesn't end. I've always enjoyed how much the engines are preserved in bands because they're under this doghouse. That I mean, look at the paint on this. Other than the head, which is obviously because of the heat cycles, it's in really good shape. Rust checker says we're good. Just not so much for the drinker side. Yeah, don't do that over there. So here's where we're at. We've unloaded it. We've got the doghouse off. We're gonna to try to unearth the engine a little bit more and try to determine what kind of six in a row we've got. And then we could start the process of figuring out where to start. You know, does the thing roll over? I'm not even sure what the fuel is doing. Take a look at the ignition system, everything like that. But I think we're going to keep it right where it's at and try to do as much work as we can in this spot and hopefully drive it out of here essentially from its own grave. All right. Oh, there's a little bit more falling off. <laughs> oh, 
Voltexes. <laughs> with look how 80s that is with like the 3D. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, this is kind of convenient. It's right in your teeth. Look how fragile those are. Engine cooling instructions. <laughs> how to keep it cool. Good luck. Well, I mean, everything is really good to work on except for the front of the engine. The, the thing we need to get to. It looks like there's a belt on it, but it's like rotted for sure. How do you even get... The, you have to take all this out, don't you, to get the rat out. I wonder if just this would remove. And like slip. But even that, I don't know, it would work. Yeah. Mm. Maybe you just take the whole front of the truck off. Wiper motors. This is pretty. The oil fill. <laughs> is that also the checker? Can't be. No, right. Oh, right there's the checker. What have we got? Still going? Oh yeah. There's oh, something. There's chunks in it. Uh oh. How does it taste? I don't know. What's the unknown is the chunk? Ooh, that's like uh that's like 30 weight. But what are these chunks? Oh there's some moisture in there. It's not good. A little milkshakey if we ran it. But it does have viscosity because it's such thick oil. So I think we're okay for now. At least there's something in it. That That is an impressive dipstick. I thought this was a transmission when I first saw it on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. There. Nothing in here? No. Corrosion. The, the exact thing you want to find. Here's another tag. Is there a hood prop anywhere for this thing? Okay, good. I was gonna say, it's surprising how heavy <laughs> that hood ends up being. <laughs> <laughs> there was a hood prop. There. No, that wasn't it. Well, what in the devil? How does that work? No complaints? It's working? Alright. Knew it. I knew how long it was that one. Well, we've got a lot of good stuff to work off of. Wow. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, she's in there a little bit. Nail it. See if this little guy actually does something. Okay, these are really in here, but they do look like they're still on the bead still. So maybe there's a 0 0.3976 repeating percent chance that this look well, that stick was moving. I just I seen it with my eyeball. Good thing about bias flies is they are so tough. The sidewalls are so hard that they usually hang in there. So. I think it might be airing off. Look at that. It's pulling itself out of the ground right now. That's incredible. I was going to say that tree root doesn't go into the tire. Oh, right. That one there going that way. Yeah. Look at how much air. Wow. It wants to run. It wants us to bring it back. Well, this was a fairly new tire when it was sparked. Look at the tread on that thing. Like, even the rear has got a lot. The trick is, this is crazy. The fact that it's lifting itself up. Wow. Well, 
One's holding air. Make your bets. You can comment down below what you think. We got some winter bias pies over there. I think it's the same flavor. But that one's going to be the interesting one because it's got the weight on it. The, the weight, and it's a lot deeper. Yeah, a lot deeper. This one seems to be going. So you guys go, you know, we're 25% of the way there. Let me know what you think about these three over here. We just need three to pass school, right? 75% <laughs> is passing. Yeah. So this one might be a little bit different of a story. She's all the way down to the poverty cap here. We do see it's on the bead. Well, from what we can see anyway, but look how folded over it is. The weight of the van and everything is kind of, you know, doing that thing. But we'll give her a shot. It says it has a pound and a half. That can't be right. Let's see what happens. This one is really in the ground. still a lot of nature under there oh there's a lot of nature yeah go ahead and crank her all right and return it oh it's rotating it's rotating yeah do you think you can do 360 Let's, we'll keep working on it feels like it's getting a little tight here maybe i just heard compression actually feels like it i heard her squeak do you think our mouse is back <laughs> could, could be oh there you go oh wait just slipped a little there slipping it, here right or is it turning it's turning really right there yeah it's turning i think you're coming off a compression stroke oh yeah there's some comp compressing compression one of those words it's complicated oh we're golden i think that's 360 now i recognize that fan blade that's slipping now okay so we have one little spot that's a little rusty that's got to be where it was sitting all these years. Because I, so, I kind of heard it pop when I first hit it, you know? Yeah, and I kind of heard that same thing, like the whole thing echoed. So we have one rusty spot, which the smart thing would be to pull the plugs and oil it. Yeah. That's the smart thing. Or send it. We just have to decide which. We know it turns, so the likelihood of breaking the starter is a lot lower, right? Correct. Questionable choices? <laughs> Well, that's fantastic news. Engine rotates. Yeah, re really well. One spot's a little questionable, but it's pretty surprising, actually. I thought for sure that thing would be locked up. Well, <laughs> as you could tell, dusk has fallen upon us. We've pretty much maximized our time today, but we cleared out all this, these trees and brush. We can we got, see it. We can see it. We got stuff cleaned out on the inside. The engine rotates, which is huge for us. That, that's a big deal. Like, that's super encouraging. We got 75% of the tires aired up, which means we're going on to fourth grade. No more Mrs. Crow. <laughs> Passing. Yes. <laughs> but, unfortunately, we're going to have to call it for tonight. But we'll be back on this as soon as possible. But this is a good point for you to drop down there in the comments. What do we do with this thing? Original restoration, run it as a rat rod, <laughs> clean it up. Nine turbos, supercharge it, mid-engine, I don't know. Two engines, but we've got room for four. This is true. We could, I don't know how we do it, but we could put four. The possibilities are endless. Just don't sleep Just an EV. It. Yeah. That's not us. There's okay. other channels for it. That's, that's too, not us. Too many digitals. All right, cold snack time. <laughs> Good idea. Well earned. We are back on the Georgia Supervan with a little bit more light and a little bit more rain. That's super it's, awesome. It's been raining four days straight, so this is like the perfect time to work on the van in yeah. the wash. Yeah, at least we're not in a drainage ditch on 30-year-old bias plies. <laughs> That's fine. But we've got yeah. the van somewhat cleaned out. We know the engine rotates a little bit. Yep, one crunchy spot, but we pretty much can rotate around. So I think what we need to do is just jump right into this inline six and just see if we can get it to sputter, pop, bang. Anything. And then we can invest the time and probably break some, assuming in hardware and lines and fuel and full ignition and fuel make it happen there. And it's going to be a lot. Everything. But we got to start somewhere. It's super. It's the super van. Okay, I'll get a spark lighter wrench. <laughs> 
I think we should take advantage of the breeze because if you remember, it had a smell. A okay. very bad smell. So, press. there we go. I don't oh. know, is that actually going to help us or is it just going to walk the smell at us? I don't know. Might end up being a wind tunnel. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know if the mice or the rats have officially moved out. We gave them notice. Boy, it is. The moisture in the air has really brought her up a tickle. <laughs> Did this passenger door open? Uh, yeah. I think that's our only inoperable door. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. That's, that is tight. It's great. So I wonder, we'll pull the sparklators out. We probably should throw some juice in there, huh? Let it soak yeah, a little it, bit. Let it soak. Check where the rats have chewed so that way when we put power to it, we don't set it on fire. That's true. We could do a fire test with a battery. I don't even know if we got to rig up a fuel system yet. We could just dump something down the fuel and make it happen here. Like a, <laughs> wow, that's a soda top there. And points, I guess we could pop the lightning whirler open. Oh, yeah, look at the mouse shoes. Wow. They were interested in some very, like, they ate the heater hose. That's yeah. the, what is so sweet about it that they wanted to eat it? Oh, this is officially a 240. Yep, you know, it is not the 300. It's too bad. All right, sparkulators coming out. These lightning hoses are definitely going to be leaking the lightning. Well, I don't think we're going to be reusing those, but this looks fairly clean in here. It was stuck. I had to pop it free. I'm going to try to file these points first. Rotor doesn't look that bad. That's not terrible, terrible. Mices. You know, this is mouse house level 40,000 gonna pop the sparkulators out we're gonna run some juice in there let it soak a little bit it's gonna make a mess in here but boy this thing is definitely gonna be dry help them rings and give her a little bit of lubrication then we got to get in here and figure this fuel make it happen or out too so uh, how's number two going it's actually it's fine no it's terrible I almost uh Oh yeah, there you go. So full of water, <laughs> not good. And so is number one. But the good news is mechanically, they're all richer than Bill Gates. So it was firing on six when it was parked. And there was no mechanical damage. None of them were bent up or deformed. So that's great news. I mean, well, so far. And we only have two problem cylinders. Right. There's four more. Four good ones. That's... Yeah. Uh, Percentage is 71%, is that right? Math, carry the three, it sounds right, yeah. At 94% actually, I think. <laughs> we have 94% of the cylinders ready to go, so. Yeah, the great thing about straight sixes, when you juice them like this, it's actually gonna float the whole piston in there all the way around the ring. When you get the V8s, all the juice sits on the bottom. It doesn't really help you too much, but. Unless you're working on the Tower of Power. Oh, that's true. Slant six, yep. you only get half of them. Oh, it looks like number two is at the top, so that's actually good. I could probably fill it enough to try to flow it out in the other crusties. But we'll put this whole can in here, let them soak while we're doing everything else, and then I guess we could test the starter and hit the key and... Let it spray all over? Yeah, whoever not it. turn the key. Not <laughs> it. <laughs> so we were a little bit worried because we were only getting like 5% throttle. And I decided to try to lubricate it to pop the throttle cable off, and it immediately closed. So uh, whoever drove this in, drove it in hard and just had it pinned <laughs> wide <laughs> open. She was, as soon as we... <laughs> she was to the floor. <laughs> but in positive news, our Carter single barrel, like we're getting full smooth mo movement out of it. The, you lube the throttle cable, and yeah, that's doing the thing. <clears throat> Look at that. We just need some more juice down here, maybe. See, it just wants to go. Yeah, listen. But don't we all? Well, here, let's connect it. Does it still work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just oh. have to remember it's got cruise control. Yeah. Set it and forget it. <laughs> yeah. There's probably a hundred other things wrong with the carburetor, but a stuck throttle blade is not one of them. 
very specific reason I chose that battery for this vehicle no it's it's just cheap it's got the go handle on it and it should work you know so we can kind of test a few things here at once get this battery in the hot one clean up these terminals a little bit you know it's slightly dirty once we get that on we could test the relay the wiring to the key we actually got ignition sticks and if the starter works because if any of that has failed well we got to start dialing for parts i guess but i'm confident i also got the lone wolf with so we can jump it if need be just to make sure that it cranks and the starter is working that could probably either be a two bolt starter or a three bolt starter. And that gets a little tricky, I found out, with the experiences. You gotta get into marine starters and it's different parts companies use different housings, but the front's the same, but the, you gotta swap the, it's a mess. I ran to ask for a battery cleaning brush and that's what he handed me. That's a heavy duty metal bit, so. Apparently we've been cleaning them wrong all our life. Yeah, that's all right. That's one way to get her done. <laughs> Got to be gentle. Ooh, this cable feels crunchy. Yeah. Oh yeah. You just don't want to take too much off, right? Sure. There's fresh metal in there. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's our positive, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Good enough for the girls we date. <laughs> All right. Ready for smoke check? Yep. All right. Oh, <laughs> look at that. We got hazards. Nice. We got two lights working. What about the back? It's clicking even under the dash. The light's working? So is the look left. Look at that. We're... Uh, well, we got brake lights, that means. We're ready to drive. Ha. Right? I mean, basically, let me pull the lights out. At least twist or pull? I don't know how to run it. I don't know how to run the light switch. I think it might be stuck. Huh. I don't know how to turn it off. Stop. Quit. There we go. Fingers crossed. Okay. Blinkers on. Oh. There we go. All kinds of clicking. Yes! Whoa! Oh, I'm getting so... Oh, that's turning great. Like, really good. And look at how the mist. Like, it's actually compressing fairly well. Oh. <laughs> so you notice here, the head's all wet in front of the sparkulator holes all the way down, except for number six so i'm a little bit nervous we don't got any compression in here so i'm gonna stick my thumb in here and jared's gonna crank it go ahead all right Where's, there it is oh it's got it okay maybe i just didn't put enough juice in there i don't know i think i would have the wd bath maybe would have been better yeah i think <laughs> i came out a little less unscathed <laughs> He's I just it through the door. <laughs> okay, well now we just got to figure if we got power to the lightning can. We could test the lightning can. Uh, you know, key on kind of power stuff. I don't smell any fire. Nothing's what? getting hot. Oh. No horn. No horn. We got to get our money back. Is the key on? There we go. Yeah, I think the mice have gotten into a lot of this. Oh, wipers. Wipers do come up and down. That's pretty incredible. I tried that earlier and I wasn't getting anything. It only has one speed. Oh, okay. This, this is all in. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. Huh. Much better. Hard to see, but we're, you know, it's making lightning. Just a little bit more. This dipstick is just comical. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure that sounds great going down the road. Sound like a rod knock. All right. Put this back together. 
then I got my beepy boop light. We'll hook this in line with one of the wires that looks the least mouse chewed, 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 chewed. Anyway, I don't know French. Okay. Then we can make sure that we got lightning to the sparkulator. Then we'll replace everything and put all of it in. Plan? Sounds like a good one. Well, here's where we're at. We got an all new lightning storm in here now. Jared actually picked up points for it. So I went ahead and put those in and now she's really snapping. And while I was doing this, you did a lot of wiring. Yeah, we, we're being optimistic. Not only did we run new power to the coil from where they chewed it, but we hooked up oil pressure, coolant temperature. I believe this is an idle up. And then we have one mystery wire. Oh, okay. If the mystery wire has power, that might be nice for something later down the road. Maybe it goes to the alternator, who knows? Yeah. Now it's exciting, right? Yeah, now it's the fun part. <laughs> went ahead and unhooked the old fuel line from the tank and it just went poof with dirt. What I'm gonna do is hook up this NASCAR fuel system here. I am gonna buzz the electric fuel pump for just a second with this battery just to prime the line and get some juice into that old diaphragm to give it a shot. And then we're gonna turn off the electric pump and just see if the mechanical okay. pump will do something. And we'll also see if squirters work. Nope, definitely not. And then we'll prime it, twist the key, and scientifically, okay. this should, should... Should run. Should do something. We have compression on at least one cylinder. We know we have spark, so fuel's the last part of the puzzle, right? Yeah. So It's got oil in it. It's old, but it's good enough to run just for 15 seconds and say, great, it runs. Then we can figure out how to get you know that out and change the oil. It's on the ground. It's Okay, we got the leak fixed. It's another chunk. We primed it. It was dribbling. We don't really have an accelerator pump, but... We have a dribble pump. We have, yeah. <laughs> so he's going to manage the throttle. I'm going to give her the lightning here and Let's see, see what happens. Right. Bring the thunders. No way! Immediately! Got oil pressure, the valve tank quieted down. All right. A white side exhaust leak. Is it pumping fuel or? I don't think so. It's, it's choking. Yeah. Oh, oh. All right. Let's try that. <laughs> it didn't even hesitate. Oh. Our dribble pump worked pretty well. <laughs> Let's try it again with the electric pump. All right. Nope, oh, too much. Where do you want? Oh, she's a little rich. I think we're uh, flooding it with the... With the dribbles? Is it still dribbling? Uh, no, that's come back around. Oh, the needle's hold. All right, now it's just got to... Trust the guy who does computers to manage the carburetor here. <laughs> There it is. That's a good spot. Well, that's probably yeah. good enough. We know it runs. <laughs> that's going to have to be rebuilt. Incredible. The oil light came on after we shut it off, so that sensor works. So that's wired up right. And that's wired. So that means the coolant temperature should work once we, you know, reconnect it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got Bluetooth heater hoses and stuff. It only huh? clanked for, what, eight, ten seconds? And... It felt, yeah. It quieted down. No rod knocks, nothing bottom endish. I didn't have enough time to check if the exhaust is plugged, which could also be why oh, it's now. Why it's... Yeah. Cause this... Well, we can look and see, but there's a good probability. Yeah. Well, let's look at the air cleaner, because you know I said earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so chances are, if the air cleaner looks like this. Oh. Thank you. That's about to look really dumb, I'm just trying to rip it apart. <laughs> Hermetically sealed. There we go. Oh, yeah. Sawdust. Hey, we could use this though, that's still good. Oh, wow. I would say odds are good the exhaust is gonna look 
similar. Similar. So we should probably cut that off somewhere. Yep. Sweet. That's a pretty blue. Runs though. Good job. Awesome. This is uh, getting real fun. Well, there you have it. After 32 years, the super van is once again alive. And we both agree. It sounds pretty good, actually. The valve train quieted right down. There's no knocks, bangs, or obnoxious ticks or anything like that. So we're pretty excited to go ahead and charge forward on this. But here's the thing, it's the weekend. We have a limited amount of time to get to the parts store, and most importantly, the tire store, because either and or, this van has got to leave this spot. And although three of these hold wind, it's not for very long. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing in the air, get these tires busted off, there's some wheels and other assortment of goodies around, lawnmowers, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Get that off, run out the town, get a few parts, uh, some fuel make it happen or stuff, some heater hose stuff, odds and ends, and then obviously the tires, like I was saying, get back to this thing. And uh, hopefully we can get this thing rolling here pretty soon, test the clutch, and then last very last brakes. I've never got brakes. Trying to sneak jacks around in this <laughs> leafy mud, viney stuff. Oh, That's gonna be all we get to lift. That's it, okay. Slide a wheel onto theirs. Well, we decided to dig through the tire pile and just find something like this. Wow, nice choice. <laughs> a regular Addis's on the aluminium old schools. We'll bust that off, put this on, and just kinda do the swap a game, but it's gonna be easier than trying to get something to hold this up in this compost, is basically what we're sitting in. So Randy does a lot of custom everything here. Obviously, he can make nice things, and he was gonna make a nice little plate, hub adapter, and I said, uh, let's just take this rusty wheel and then do something like this. Except how are we going to get the lug nuts on? Eh, we'll figure it out. And then uh, hopefully that'll bust it free. No longer going with the six lug wheel because, well, that's a Chevrolet bolt pattern, pretty sure. So now we're up to uh, what we feel is the correct one, chrome. Now it's a wheel breaker free or 10,000 with or without the valve stem. And these should be available online pretty soon. Nope. Well, you get three guys together in a shop. This is what we got. So we could pry sledgehammer and impact at the same time on this unit here and we're hoping well now it's clamp force not shear force right it's, it's gonna work great yeah so there's a lot of science you can't see the math we did but we had it all out here it's very, very technical yeah nice welds Jeez. okay let's go try this out are we pushed all the way back okay Turn, the wheel offset is a thing but it's just right. Yeah. I mean, this is all, we did the math. We're going to Amazon some wheel spacers to make this all work out just fine. <laughs> no, that's a premium kit comes with the wheel spacer. <laughs> the pro kit has the multi-lug wheel. Uh, impact up front. Okay. So he was trying to put the lugs on, and Jared got a little jumpy and just barely leaned on it. Yeah, just put, put it in and just... Boom. It works. Work it back and forth. Yeah, there. It actually works. I'll be dead. <laughs> who, who knew science? Yeah. Science is fun. Or what, what was Bill Nye's thing? Science is amazing. The future is now. No, that was no. Captain Planet. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm still going to say it works because I did that. 
giver. That Maybe we need the... No. Some heat. We forgot to cut our heat holes. Threw it out. Thought I ordered the premium. I can't believe this. It's working. You can steer it out a little bit, get some clearance. There you go. She's a little tighter than the rear. Yeah, it's a little, but we haven't beaten on it quite as much because uh, we can't get this one, so. Well, that's true, yeah. The back ones we beat on like a cabin screen door, but we're being a little more delicate up here. It, it, it's getting better, keep torquing it. Takes a little bit. Are you gonna carry this with you for every revival now? Oh yeah. <laughs> we just gotta get multi-bolt pattern in there and some heat parameters. Is the breakaway torque within spec? <laughs> yeah. Success. Here was the issue. You can see where that shoe is just completely welded in here, but we decided to take the whole hub with it. We just chiseled these off on the back to let these flare out a little bit. Give us a little bit more room. We have new everything up here, so that's fine. We just got to uh, somehow hillbilly resurface these. Been there, done that. And then put these back on. We may keep the hub in the drum. May could separate it. I don't know yet. But the most important thing is it's off. Look at these lines in here. They're fine. Oh, we'll just pretend we didn't see that. Or the that spring works well the captain side has turned out to be the biggest fight of them all the way the hub is stopped the bolt pattern gives us a disadvantage because it's either almost on the ground or it's up here in our teeth there's really no middle so we're going to try to stuff the bf good or riches underneath this get the floor jack put it under that and lift and pry and step and heat and bang. See if we can get this side free. Jared ran to get rubber on those other wheels, hopefully. And that's one thing off the list, but we still have a huge brake battle in front of us here. Strategy change. This is where we at. Now do you just crack it and let it fall? I like that. All right, let's do it. Wait, crack or just wide open? I'll say wide open. Yeah, it's wide open. Wow. That did nothing. Nothing. That's kind of concerning. <sighs> cool jack stand. Gets it out away from the vehicle so you can work on it. This is true. Yeah. We could pretend that didn't happen and keep being optimistic. Wow. You go stage two on the impact. Yeah, we can, the van is on it. we can stage two it. Behind you. Full stage two. Wow. And you were prying. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That was all the marbles. Well, I don't think we're going to pull or push heavier than a inline six in transmission. So, we got a wheel under that side, a sinking jack stand over there. I think we need to do a motor swap for more weight. Motor swap yeah. it, that would help. More weight would help. Throw a Windsor in there. <laughs> Oh, the side's busting out. You can see it right there. Oh, yeah. So, some of this is muffler packing, but uh, most of that's just 
mouse house. Impressive. Oh, well, now it's straight pipe, so that fixes everything. This side is done. Just got to slide the rebuilt. You know, don't just pretend you're not seeing any of that. Slide this back on, and then there's only two more. <laughs> Great. Ooh, that front turns too. What? No, let's see it. All right. It now it's just going to go in circles. We got some statuses. Yes. Mastercrafts. And then look at this. They got fancy now. They like signaturize it or it. I don't know. 235, 70 something. They fit. And it turns. It does the thing. That's only been a. Do you want to test? Day. Do you want to test the e-brake real quick? Hold on. Do we want to quit while we're ahead? Oh. <laughs> well, I think that's going to do it for day two on the super van. A lot done today. It doesn't really look like it, ish, but it runs. It's alive. Starts with a key. Really easily. That which is amazing. Which is really nice. Uh, we got 50% of the brakes done. 50% of the new tires on. So we get some more daylight. We don't know what order, but we got to get the other brakes and tires on, obviously. Get it running long enough to where we can start troubleshooting things like head gaskets, bearings, stay cool, and then clutch transmission. Does it move? Does it move? That'd be nice. Stuff like that. So we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. <laughs>
reconnected, I believe we're going to be good to fill it with uh, the liquid cooling juice. Once we get that done, and we know we don't have any more leaks, I'm also going to be replacing our fuel pump as it is not sending anything up. So uh, we'll replace and get an improved explosive liquid transfer device. And then let's just straighten this up and work on shift linkage because we can move this around and nothing is happening. So we could be doing literally all of this work for that to let us down. Don't let us down. This side is all assembled. Now I'm just rolling the adjuster wheel, spreading these shoes out, and I'll throw our rebuilt drum on here. And I like to do this manually, put it on and off. You guys have seen this, you know, 342 times. Just how you can hear it scraping, just slightly. And that's gonna help your wheel cylinders not get blown out. And then you don't have to spend forever spooning these out when you're uh, bleeding the brakes it just makes the process a whole lot faster in most cases you don't even have to spoon them if you could just get this set correctly in the first place i'm going to move up front jared's making some headway right yeah we're down uh it turns out there's multiple upper radiator hoses so one small delay there but now we're putting the fuel pump on and uh i blew in the line and you can hear it back there yeah i could hear it right over here but the gas cap is stuck, but that might be good. That, that water can't get in, right? Right. So Maybe. things are moving. Not the van yet. <laughs> Tire. It will eventually come off again <laughs> for brake lines. But. Three more times, wheel bearings. Yeah. When that one starts leaking down, that was the tire we found uh, flat in the morning. So the questionable wheel bearing side with the questionable tire, just put it all in one corner. Yeah, on the driver's side. That's where you want that. <laughs> yeah. Now we can get the sticks and rotten logs and wagon wheels and stuff out from underneath, which is really nice. Oh, no, I, there's still shift linkage and oil change. Oh. Which is on me. I lost that. So have, you get to be out from under the there. Room now, though. I know. Wow. Ah. From, you know, the pinion being buried in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. The dirt, well, you can still see the mark. Like, on the wheels. I mean, the body was practically on the ground. Yes. And we were kind of talking, does a 72, possibly 74, we have to research, the engine has 74 emissions, but I'm pretty sure it is a 72, so now we don't know what we're working on, but right. well, does it deserve to be pulled out? And well, yes, I right? I think so. I mean... Don't think that a vehicle has to be cool to save it or trendy or whatever. It's this struck our fancy because look how straight it is and it's neat. It's just different. A lot of people wouldn't save it, which makes us want to save it. Right. And realistically, when all said and done, between buying it parts and tires, it's probably going to be less than $2,000. Oh, easily. Yeah, easily. Like realistically, like we're probably the $1,500 mark. And it's not a Mustang, it's not a Camaro, it's not a Chevelle, but it's a really cool super van that you're not going to have much money in and you can start cruising something cool and then get parts for whatever project you have later. Or start any business you want to, as we discovered on the inside of this. <laughs> <laughs> Lighting, plumbing, uh, extermination business. All You've got it. everything you need for it, right? Uh, <laughs> right we're going to have to saws off some sheet metal once we lower this oh no we're gonna have clearance issues with turning <laughs> we'll pretend we didn't see that maybe problem. that's why it had really tiny <laughs> wheels up front yes whoops <laughs> all right well i'll scoot underneath so we can get some fresh oil in it sounds good it's just amazing to just think about this poor thing just sitting doing nothing some idiots are filming it to give it another life <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so where was that nut you were seeing that was super loose? Oh. Yeah, that thing right there. Oh no, there's just no bushing left. 
Oh, it's gone, huh? <laughs> oh, it is moving the nut, yeah. Okay, well. I mean, it's two bolts. I'm sure they've got one on the shelf, right? Yeah, add it to the list. <laughs> all right, come on. How tight is this going to be? Oh, oh wow. Not at all. Oh, it's a PH8A. Get it off of there. I'll go get you the wicks. Or did you grab it already? I already grabbed I didn't grab the oil to pre-fill it, though. Okay, I'll go get it. Yep. Yeah, now pass. I think that's what it is. Never seen it. Anyway, this van, you know, the 240s or whatever, requires a very specific oil. Nope. Doesn't. But I am still going to use the Rotella heavy duty diesel oil, 1540. It's got all the vitamins and minerals that these old flat tappets like. Drink up. Whoa, way too much. <sighs> Wonder what Jody Messina's doing. Probably riding a horse or something. We are getting very close. We got to put some ice cube juice in this. Hook up some sort of fuel supply. I think we'll use the NHRA tank. Jared's got that new pump later in there. That'll make fuel happen up to the fuel make it happener. We could fire this thing up once again and should be pretty good to go. I mean, we still don't technically have juice brakes, but we've got the e-brake. And why would they make it unless you're supposed to use it? <laughs> That's what I say anyway. A little ice cube juice. This rad doesn't look that bad, actually. It's a little crystallized, but... Maybe we'll get lucky. Well, I don't hear it running on the ground yet. And I don't see it. Heater core is not leaking yet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I hear it running on the ground. It's coming out of the top. I only got half a gallon and it's full. I don't know if I can believe that. Well, I can't believe it either when I'm looking right at it. <laughs> Maybe it didn't all leak down. Well, it was trying to push coolant out the heater core hose that was chewed open. Yeah, maybe it just drained the heater core and the block was still full. And it was all sitting in the lower rat hose. I can hear some air bubbles working through it. I'll let it sit for a minute and top it off. Huh, I'll be dipped. So in there is the linkage. I think we had it stuck up here and they were kind of moving in concert when they shouldn't be. And based on that collar, I think the shifter has to come up in the cab to get our shift pattern working correctly. It was moving both at the same time, but not engaging anything, but we're making some big headway here. Let me see if I can grab something up here now. Now. See, it's still not separated. Oh, there you go. That felt like something. Yeah, moving the front one. The rear is kind of moving a little bit too. I wonder, are we missing a bushing on there? No, it's just the shifter isn't going into an H pattern. The, the rod on the floor isn't lifting. I think that's the issue. And that is trying to do something. I think that's third and second. Yeah. That's the front shifter, so that would be third and second. Yep, and then it should go up for this reverse and first. One, and then this would be first and reverse. Yeah, so if we could pry or bang this, get it to separate, we might be good. <laughs> Try it again, there you go. We got separation. That's second, third, and then H pattern up, reverse, first. Nice. Give it some more loop and some more play. Yeah, I can see the water displacement coming down. Yeah, the rust is just flowing off of it. I don't know why. It's not like there's acorns and a bunch of other stuff sitting up here. Right. Seems to be doing the thing. Let her out. Gotta suck all the way through. It's priming. For 
should we give it electrical first? Yeah, I can give it a little electrical. Well, here, let me give it one more shot. the old air filtration system that's that's a little cleaner that's a little bit better i appreciate you know everyone just you know has a removable lid and this is like a you, you need a degree to put this thing together <laughs> <laughs> filter in then you got to find your arrows right there and we got an arrow here you remember where it went wait i thought it was a there's some um, air there. Why does it got to be so complicated for an air filter? Uh, Ford. <laughs> and then not on the bottom. Yep. Which is separate then. Uh, oh, and then we need the, the bolt that holds the coil on also holds the uh, air filter. Let me loosen here. Okay. This just does not make How is this so complicated? <laughs> it just needs to let air go in the engine. What are you doing to the van? We got to make room for the big tires. Uh, so that way we can turn them. On the ground, it looks like we might make it, but rather than running the risk, oh, yeah. this just seems like extra metal anyway. Yeah. It's only in the way of fun. Well, here we are at the bottom of a hill. This is kind of a drainage ditch, isn't it, really? Yeah, I don't know if it was cut as one, but it became one. You know, it's funny, you know, nature puts water where it wants it. Yeah, it does its thing. Which was right in the brake drums of our uh, Econoline here, but... I'm so thankful to be moving this thing. Hopefully, 32 years, three decades, this van is set right here. Jared's going to try to wheel this thing. I'm going to ride shotgun over on the drinker side. Yeah. The goal is to get it out of this ravine, up on top of the hill, where we have a little bit more suitable ground to finish yeah. the brakes. Yeah, we just need brake lines, because we've got oil, we've got the ice cube juice. Yep. We've got four tires that mostly hold air. Yep. But they do hold air, they're new. Yeah, uh, fuel pumps in it, I mean. We broke the shifter loose. That's where we were thinking, we were talking that we were heard, the story between these two vans was either cooling issue or a clutch. Yeah. And we think, the shifter linkage bushings are shot and it got jammed in two gears and got parked over that. I think so too. Cause, Cause it, it really was mimicking a severe transmission issue or the clutch was just gone. gone. Cause it, the lever was kind of doing something but not quite. So it just goes to show you, you never really know why something is parked. Take a gamble on it. So anyway, here we go. Let's, this let's is gonna be it. interesting. <laughs> All right, neutral. Just don't breathe behind you either. Okay. Two pumps or do we just let it go? I just twist, see what happens. Oh. <laughs> Loyal. Okay. <laughs> Clutch. Wait, why am I touching the brake? Yeah, there's zero brake. Let's give it a shot. Come on. It's moving? Yes. Yes. It's moving. It's got to work its way out of the hole. Spinning. There we go. Yeah. Is it spinning or slipping? I think it's spinning. I'm not oh, seeing any. Right, 
okay? Don't fall out. Okay. And we're going forward. This is all we need. Oh, yeah. Oh. Can you see that van back there? I can. It's somewhere. Uh, it won't feel it if we hit it, I guess. Oh, you got it, Earl. Oh. I think we're stuck on the plumber pipe. There we go. Oh, there's a tree. <laughs> All right, do we take it on this shot, or do we get one more aim? I think one more. Okay. Whew. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's a little longer than, than you think. This reminds me of uh, racing in the old days, so you had the mechanic <laughs> in the passenger seat. Oh, I was like, <laughs> what's going on with my pedal? Oh, she's a smoker now. That's just tire smoke. Yeah, he'll come around. He's old drinks. Okay. All right, here we go. Can we get out of here? Oh, no. Come on, old girl. Come on. You got yes. it. You got it. Yes. Yes. Is that tire or is that That's clutch? clutch? I smell I that. smell the clutch. Okay, yeah. so maybe it was parked from the clutch. <laughs> Woo, but it's We're moving. Out. <laughs> Successful trip up the hill. We have a little bit of a clutch slip, but how much dirt and dust and rust and grime is on that? Maybe it'll come back around. For now, we're going to forget that that ever happened. We'll work on the brakes. This is locked up like Alcatraz. So I'm working out here to get the juice pipes off and these bolts that I'm going to have to torch out. And you're getting the rod off the pedal assembly. The rod. And then I'm going to start making some brake lines. Sweet. And uh, we've also learned that our catalog lied to us. Well, that's right. Yeah. We have a uh, disc drum booster, or excuse me, disc drum master cylinder. But that's, you know, sure. That's what we're going to go with. We got two different flavors of the same. So that's fine. And then I think our new goal, oh, parker brake works. The lock on the parking brake doesn't change. <laughs> Don't bump it. So is our new goal being with how sketchy this is, let's just call it what it is. Drive this to your shop. Is yeah. that what we're trying to do? Yeah, we had a couple cool touristy things we were going to try to swing around and do, but as long as we're engaging ourselves, it's okay. But when you start putting other people at risk, yeah, that's yeah. not a questionable choice to make. We're just going to beeline it. This steering is something else. I mean, literally nothing happens so if we get say 40 percent brakes 35 percent steering 12 percent visibility i think it's smart just to go to your place and then yeah. figure out what to do you guys have seen this slippery slope so here's the deal if we just back these nuts out we're going to break these juice pipes right in half then i got to replace all this mickey mouse stuff way down into there distribution block somewhere back there so heat lots of juice and I like to just barely pinch the line and then we're gonna work these two together slowly and we'll eventually make enough heat itself it should start backing off and there's a slight chance we might be able to save these they're still pretty rusted but give it a shot two guys concentrating a lot around a bench vice <laughs> This must be a front swoopy acrosser brake line. Yeah, that's that's the passenger side. This is the starting of the, the driver's side, and uh, these are temporary. We'll get us home. That's all that needs to happen. That's wrong. What? So I did the right thing and put it in, and then uh, these are wrong. So I'm going to do the right thing and just switch them around. 
you know, so the rear has all the brake power. And then the uh, rod isn't right to go to the inside. So I did the right thing there and just bolted that up. Anyway, so now the brake switch probably ain't gonna work. Geometry's off, but that's okay. Once this is finished, we're just gonna pretend none of that happened, basically. Jared's getting close on lines. I think he's got one left. And then we're going to bench bleed this. I always bleed mine right in the truck. Jared will pump it. I'll put my fingers over this once we get pressure, hook the juice pipe up, and then work our way through the system. So the small reservoir for the front brakes, right? Correct. That's exactly what you want. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so you got one more flare to do up to the soft line? Yep. And then we can start bleeding and then promptly blow out all of the lines we didn't do anything about. Right. Like these little ones with the complicated curves and small fittings we don't have? Yep. Perfect. <laughs> We've been scrubbing on this windshield. The invisible glass lied to me. It surely doesn't make it invisible. We went straight to brake clean and ain't even doing nothing. I mean, it is on there. Maybe I just kick it out. It's got a crack in it anyway. It's kind of no, not really. Razor or is that blade on the inside. No, it's you can feel it. It's on the outside. Look at razor that. blade time. Yeah, or wire wheel. That might be a little too aggressive. Gravity bleeding this, and we're figuring out a fitting fiasco below may not be what it appears to be. I think the lines came with metric. Ooh. So another line attempt. So now we'll just put known fittings on it rather than trusting what came on the sticker. 10-4. Because obviously catalogs have done us really well so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, some Comet Wash, 37.9 razor blades, about 49 gallons of elbow grease. You can see out of it, kind of. That's good. Brake lines are in. It's time to bleed the brakes and see what all pops. Really looking forward to this. Well, the good news is we're ready to go. We're packed, we got some tools, some other stuff. Uh, the also good news is we just gave up on the brakes completely. Nothing is working. And every time we hit the pedal, there's this weird popping hissing noise that keeps repeating itself. So gears, prayers, and an e-brake is what's gonna get us there. Please don't ever do this, okay? but we've got a short distance. Jared knows all the back roads that have no traffic on them. And we're just gonna slow ride. That's the plan. Thanks, speedometer works. No. Go on 10.
We made it. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> oh yeah, fire's out. Well, we actually made it. Uh, so six air fresheners, four tires. Small fire. Small fire. It was, I about lost my lung. It smelled terrible. <laughs> it was a blast and what, three days of cutting it out, two days of wrenching, something that's been forgotten for 32 years. It's incredible, <laughs> three decades. Tires, brakes, ignition, oil, working through things, <laughs> unsticking stuff. A lot of unsticking. And we got a running van. Now here's the thing, this is actually not my van. Jared bought this, so he actually yeah. owns this thing. We're thinking we want to do a build with this, but we're not going to do it on my channel. We're going to do it on the Questionable Garage channel. Yeah. But we need their help to decide. We're trying to figure it out, because I have the problem of always going over the top. These absolutely insane builds that take forever and cost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Everything always Great. costs a lot of money. <laughs> but I don't know if that's the right call for this. Like, yeah. we were talking, there's... There's so many options. There's just hot rod what's there. Yep. Everyone just writes off a 240 or the 300 as a no good engine. And while on fire, like, it, it was fun driving. Like, it, it ran pretty decent. It actually. had the power. We were moving down the road yep. faster than we should for the brakes that we had. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So it's keep it original, hot rod it. You're talking about, I don't, you can't yeah. pronounce engines he's talking about. The, the Barra from Australia, which is the modern version of this, turbocharge, yeah. Yeah. if I clean the floor and it's not there. Engine in the back. Yeah, saw Engine all. in the front. Mid-engine, two oh. engines. I don't know. You There's, guys bleep bloop it in the comments. We'll be reading them. Jaren yeah. can make a decision on what he wants to do with the van. Ultimately, we're going to have a blast. Yeah. And I'll come yeah. back out here to Georgia and we'll... Do something. Less fire, hopefully. Less fire. Less mouse poop for sure. Good work, man. It was Absolutely. a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time very soon. All right. Cold snack time.